Welcome back. Well, today we have Dr. Asif Mahmood, who is here as a candidate for U.S. Congress. Well, welcome, Dr. Mahmood. Nice to meet you. Thank you so much, and same here. Very nice meeting you. You know, it's it, we were talking a little bit off camera about you know how interesting it would be that somebody with a career as long as you have had would want to go into politics. You know, what kind of first of all, tell me how long you've been a doctor and what kind of doctor you are. Um. Uh, thank you so much. I have been a uh, doctor and practicing doctor here in Southern California for the last 23 years. Uh, I am doctor of internal medicine, of pulmonary diseases, as well as intensive care unit. So I have practiced actively uh, in the last 23 years. Okay, and you have obviously been a Southern California resident for that same amount of time. So you can see some of the changes. I mean, you've been here a long time, you know what's happening in California, and a lot of people are upset about what's happening in our state as our nation. So what drove you to want to be a politician? Um, uh, to be very honest, I don't know. I still want to be a politician. I want to go there and change the dynamics, change the temperature there. Um, I have been a physician for the last 23 years. And my, uh, if you know a little bit more about me, uh, I come from a very small, very humble background. In a village, there were very few people, and my parents wanted me to be a doctor. And the only thing they asked me and they advised me is helping others is our highest calling. Mm -hmm. There was no physician around in about 50 mile, year, um, 50 mile radius, and uh, that was the need. Um, I really took that advice all my life. That's what I have been doing. In my 23 years of medical practice, I have not charged a single patient who did not have an insurance because I believe healthcare is a right, not a privilege. But it's not only me treating them. There are so many challenges, so many issues, and people who are listening to me and people who are in the need of medical help, they would know that, how hard it is for some health plans to find a primary care doctor, mm. to find a specialist is even more difficult. And if you need to have an immediately MRI or CT scan, believe me, it takes weeks to months and people suffer. Somebody has a back pain suffering for weeks before they can get MRI. Yeah. People come with chest discomfort. By the time they get diagnosis, they already have a heart attack. Mm. People have symptoms. By the time they get diagnosis, cancer is gone. Our healthcare system is broken. Our healthcare system needs to move farther. I have been doing in my capacity everything possible in the last 23 years, fighting with the IPAs and the pharmacies and everybody every day. But my help to 500,000, 2,000 people a year is now going to make a huge difference. Right. That is why I decided there needs to be somebody who can be in Congress, who can advise on the policy to make things better for people, not as an, a politician, as a, somebody who has seen their challenges, who has seen their issues, and take those challenges and issues to Washington, D.C. Mm -hmm. In my practice, I treated tens of thousands of patients. Not a single patient I asked, are you a Democrat or Republican? Right. We walked in, we discussed the problem, find the problem, found the solution, and let them go. I can bet you half of them were Republican, half of them were Democrat, <laughs> but there was not a one-time single. And same principle can go to Congress. Right, and, and I think that's a great idea, right? It's a, it's a great thought to have that. However, once you get to Congress, lots of people don't like to change. They go about their business the same way they've been doing it for so long. So hopefully you would be able to make that kind of inroads. That would be awesome. Um, you know, you look at yourself as a problem solver. Obviously, you yes. have lots of issues that you would like to change. Mm -hmm. uh, what are some of the main things that you think are super important? Um, obviously, healthcare is my passion. And healthcare, I would say healthcare is my baby. That's what I see every day. That's what is actually basically motivating me and inspiring me to do something. But today's problems, literally every forefront problem is related to healthcare, mm -hmm. whether it's finding a primary care doctor whether it is finding a specialist, whether it's in a child health care, whether it's a prescription drug, which is a huge yeah. problem. Right. Mental health, we need to address aggressively. But the most important issue today is women's health, reproductive rights, reproductive freedom, and on top of that, contraceptive rights. My opponents are going all against all these things and where I want to represent people. Even if you talk about uh, uh, gun safety, uh, bills where I am a, I'm a strong believer of Second Amendment, but to have a logical 
reasonable uh, ways to find because I am the one, people like me are the one who see the devastating effects of the bullets. When I see people in ER and ICU and hospital floors and rest of life, they suffer from them because you see on a news clip of somebody got shot. You don't see for the rest of the years, them and their family, how they suffer. Climate change, we see record temperatures. I see as a healthcare provider, especially a lung doctor, effect of climate change on actually your body. We're talking about other things that is separate, but direct effects. So I believe really that forefront, all issues are related to healthcare. That is why I think people like me would bring much better uh, prospect of people's problem in Washington DC than just a traditional, traditional, uh, traditional politician. So on your website, some of your campaign information is, we deserve more from our government. What do we deserve? We, in every day, every day thing we deserve more. We want to make sure people are not spending half of their salary, uh, income. I see so many people who are spending half of their income just on their prescription drug if they're diabetic and a heart attack or some other liver problem, they're spending half their money. We see people working, working, nurses and teachers and some people work in the government, they come to a point where they lose their houses. Yeah. We need to see that students getting all the, all the support from the government they can. We want to make sure the parents when they go to work, they have a right atmosphere for their children at home and when they send these children to school, they have right affordability and right support. Mm -hmm. and Honestly, every day living, we need more from our government because we, our main goal is to make the life of our people easier and better and comfortable and people start believing in the government instead of people just not having any trust in government. Well, you mentioned that you, know, you want people to have all of these types of things uh, that are affordable to them. However, it would seem that we're spending a lot of money in, in government right now which is making our inflation rise, it's increasing our taxes. So would you adjust what some of the money is going towards now and reassign it? Is that something you would promote? Uh, definitely. Uh, one thing I want to be very, very clear, I am not in favor of raising any taxes. This should be all well, well clear. The way we are running the system, finally, after so many, actually, first time in the history that uh, IRA bill came up and Medicare has a power to negotiate prices with pharmaceutical industry. It is going to, if this moves forward, it's going to not tens, hundreds of billions of dollars over the next 10 years. And that all money can come to the views where they need it. We need to make sure that all these big companies, I'm not taking a penny from pharmaceutical industry, I'm taking a, not a, take, taking a penny from oil industry, and they are major culprits. today. Gas prices are so high. Part of that is that all these oil industries are gouging prices, and my opponent voted against it when they tried to rein in these big oil companies to uh, uh, rein in their prices. She voted against it. We want to make sure I am pro business. I want businesses to flourish because that is the real backup economy. But not at the stake of common people. Not to go to the level where you make everybody deprived of everything and you're making billionaires there. So we need to really make an overhaul in many different ways that things can be done, there is enough money, there is enough resources, the resources need to go in the right direction. Okay, all right, excellent. And is there any last words you'd like to let our community know? Um, all, all of my message to our people is that my lifelong career, lifelong struggle has been to helping people whether I am working as a physician, whether I am protecting people's rights in Medical Board of California aggressively, whether I have been serving on homeless shelter board or working on a community college to raise uh, uh, funds for scholarships for poor children. My whole life is that my goal is not to be a millionaire, billionaire. My goal is not to play in any vested interest. My goal is to take the challenges, issues, the problems of people as they are to Washington DC and fight for them. They'll find me as their problem solver, as their uh, voice, not a traditional politician. And I would definitely, definitely uh, appreciate their support and their encouragement. Well, thank you, and good luck to you. Thank you so much. You're thank welcome. you. If you want more information about Dr. Mahmoud's campaign, you can always go to drasif.com.
drasifmahmood.com or you can send him an email at info at drasifmahmood.com. We'll be right back. <music> 